The second panel is uh, the crisis uh, in the Sahel. So looking really, uh, we thought since we were discussing climate change and it's been affected by um, serious droughts um, as well as the conflict, the ongoing conflict. Um, so we have um, playing Dr. Mohamed Chambers, the head of the UN office for West Africa and the Sahel is Essa from the Gambia. Um, playing French President Macron is uh, Ibrahim from Nigeria. Um, and the president, playing the President of the Republic of Mali, um, Mr. Ibrahim Boubacar Keita, is Tabitha from Kenya. Um, and as I said, please, once Q&A starts, do engage. You know, you can act out a role um, and make sure you, you really challenge the fellows. Thank you. Oh, uh, good, good morning. Uh, the Sahel over the years has been known for its ungoverned spaces. But since the overthrow of uh, Colonel Gaddafi in Libya, things have got even worse. And the region is really in turmoil. So we have a, a panel today that will discuss how to deal with, with the problems ongoing in the Sahel and West Africa. We'll start off with President Ibrahim Keita of Mali with an opening statement. Your Excellency, I'm President Emmanuel Macron, Dr. Mohamed Chambers, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. On behalf of the Republic of Mali, I would like to express gratitude to the ALC for this opportunity to discuss security in the Sahel at a time when we have experienced devastating terrorist attacks against both civilian and military targets. The Secure, the insecurity in the Sahel is not a problem only for the Sahel because we have realized that insecurity in our region has huge implications for security in the entire world. We are currently exploring all avenues to bring peace, in, including using dialogue, because we realize that we cannot only use force to win this, this war. Your Excellency, um, Emmanuel Macron, on behalf of the Republic of Mali, thank you very much for the technical and financial support that you continue to provide to Mali and other countries in the G5 region as we deal with insecurity. Thank you. Uh, President Macron. Well, uh, thank you for having me in this platform. Your Excellency, Mr. Bubakar Keita, Dr. Ibn Chambas, <coughs> ladies and gentlemen, as extremist attacks on civilians and troops escalated in the Sahel, so also is the rise in and to French demonstration and sentiment toward the presence of our troops. Against this background, I met the G5 Sahel leaders last month in order for them to clarify their position toward this and to French sentiment and also to set the record straight. Uh, Dr. Chambers. Thank you very much, um, Your Excellency, my dear brothers and friends. Um, Dr. Um, Abubakar Keita of Mali and President Macron of France. Thank you for this opportunity to be part of this forum. Um, I must say that since I took over office from my predecessor in 2014, bringing stability and promoting democratic governance in West Africa and the Sahel region have been my main, office's main priority. However, the region, especially Sahel, continues to experience rising insecurity, ranging from um, violent extremism, farmer harder conflict to climate change, among others. But this should not also sway our attention from positive political developments that have taken place in the region, especially West Africa, where elections have taken place in the past and we're expecting other countries to hold the same. Um, if time permits us, we will discuss some of these issues. Thank you. Uh, President Keita, initially everyone was saying that uh, the weapons that were used to invade Mali came from uh, Libya. But of late, uh, we heard that uh, the, the weapons the, the, the Islamists are using against your forces have been captured from your soldiers. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you explain that? Um, they, are, they attacked your camps and then they run off with the weapons. That is a very good question, Mr. Moderator. Um, at the beginning of this crisis, most of the weapons were coming in from Libya because of the porous nature of our borders. However, over time, we have realized that our, when these terrorist attacks happen, the attackers loot our equipment. But we're currently working together with our neighbors, one, to stem the flow of weapons from Algeria and Niger, 
Um, secondly, we're working with our soldiers to curb the <coughs> to make sure that we hold our soldiers accountable for the weapons that they have. We are also working very hard to improve the operational capability of our soldiers and to boost their morale, so that even as they confront these challenges, they're better prepared and better able to defend themselves and the sovereignty of our country. Yes, President Macron, what do you say to that? Because, I mean, the, the Malian army is not holding on to its weapons, and the Islamists, the terrorists, are using the weapons to kill French soldiers. What are you telling the, uh, your Malian president? When uh, I watch my friend, and we are ready to work with them in order to address these challenges, the French government is committed to providing military and uh, technical assistance in order for them to curb the spread of weapons in the region. Uh, Dr. Chambers, ECOMAS, or ECOMOG itself did extremely well in resolving conflicts in Sierra Leone and in Liberia. Why is it difficult now to deal with the issue in the Sahel, um, I think context is, is, there, is there no political will like it, it was in, in the Con past. Context matters. Um, just as you rightly said, um, the political will was in um, in the case of Sierra Leone and Liberia, which assisted us a lot in terms of resolving the crisis. However, the situation in Mali is quite different. Um, you have to understand that um, post 9/11, also witnessed um, changes in security issues especially with the rise of um, violent extremism and terrorism, this has complicated matters a lot. And we experiencing a lot of um, killings in Mali, Burkina Faso, and other places. However, the United Nations mission, um, the MINUSMA that was created through resolution um, 2300 is working hard to ensure that we fulfill our mandate of bringing stability in the area. Uh, members of the audience, please feel free to ask questions. Say who you are and who you're representing, yes. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. It's you again. My name is Dr. Vital Kamere, opposition activist in the Democratic Republic of Congo. My question goes to President Emmanuel Macron. I'm quite disturbed that 60 years after independence, after we fought your great-grandfathers and grandfather, you're still coming to lecture us on what to do with our continent. My question to you, why are you here? Who exactly invited you to speak about issues of the African continent? When you yourself, in your own country, the public transport is paralyzed, you're facing protests. I mean, what are you doing here? Just answer that question. Yes, what are you doing here? Thank you for your question. Let me retreat. I'm from a generation that does not come to tell Africans what to do. We work with Africans as friends and partners. To get, to get energy from Niger, right? That's what, you are, that's what you are here? We are discussing the insecurity of the Sahel. What, Terrorism what? is a global phenomenon. The terrorists have threatened to attack our soil. Our citizens have been killed and kidnapped in the Sahel. So this is a concern that we need to address. What were your citizens doing in the Sahel? No. To mine? What, what, what he is saying, he was born in 1978. He doesn't have colonial hang-up like his father or grandfather. But he's representing the colonial power. He's a colonialist himself. Is he? Are you a colonialist? <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> but, but, but. Yes. Mr. Moderator, thank you. Um, Elizabeth again, uh, Muriguri, President Macron. I, I think there is something a little bit hypocritical about your stance. You traveled across Africa a couple of years ago talking about how you were no longer, the whole concept of Cross Afrique was not something uh, you were interested in in the same old ways. Uh, the colonial hang-ups, hangover is gone. This is a new era. And yet, your country continues to pursue the same kind of policy in the Sahel. You're not the only country in the world that faces uh, terrorists, um, attacks or challenges in the Sahel or anywhere else. Why are you not present in Afghanistan or Syria in the same way that you're present in the Sahel? Even all these demonstrations against your government, you continue, your, your, your dominance persists. You have taken the echo, which should have been a West African currency, and you're governing it as though it was your own. Please tell us why France 
needs to have a seat at the table when it comes to issues of the Sahel or the Francophone African world. Thank you. Well, uh, why France is the Sahel? And this is a question that often uh, get asked. For, well, for two simple reasons. One, and this I have repeated several times, is to fight terrorism. And the second is to enable the G5 leaders to assume full sovereignty in their territories. And uh, in regard to the, uh, the currency issue, these decisions less with the African countries using the system. We are open to discussion with them if they are, want to exit this uh, system. Like I mentioned, we are working toward a new uh, partnership and relationship that respects the territorial integrity of my African partners. So this decision lies with the countries. Thank uh, you. Dr. Chambers, do you see any uh, contradictions in, in the French involvement in the, the Sahel? I wouldn't say there is. Let's go on then. I wouldn't say there is, there is any contradiction. Like I said, um, the mission of the United Nations is to ensure, especially my office, you know us, is to ensure that there is peace and security and also democratic governance in the Sahel region and West Africa. So we are committed to working with all partners um, that are working towards ensuring that there is stability in Sahel. Well, the United Nations is funded by its partners and members. Uh, yes. Thank you. Uh, my questions, we, uh, three questions. I'm uh, a Mayan citizen, uh, Abu Bakr. Um, uh, I will start with uh, my head of state, um, Your Excellency. Uh, you always receive President Macron and it's kind of a partnership. But Malians are asking French soldiers to leave. What is your stake about that? And uh, what has Mali and the G5 have done to actually address this issue of uh, terrorism? Because it's not all about the arms attack. It's also about uh, poverty. It's also about unemployment. It's also about all the structural challenges. The, that's my question to you, Your Excellency. <clears throat> President Macron, you've destabilized Central African Republic. You've destabilized Cote d'Ivoire. You've destabilized a lot of African countries. Today, you are in the Sahel region. What are your interests in the Sahel region? Are you a firefighter or a fireman? <laughs> Give us an answer. Because what you are doing, and I'm very, very surprised because we are quite, we are age made. And you're just 40, 41, or 39, I don't know. But you behave like this 42. ancient Jacques Chirac. These old politicians, I don't, what is your vision about the young people of Africa? Why are you here? And then I'll go to the UN. <clears throat> you disappoint Africa. It seems like you, the UN, you are for the uh, P5, or the five uh, member of the Security Council. When it comes to other African countries, which contribute less to the money, the money you are interested in, uh, you do nothing. Are you all right, okay, what President Macron is doing in Africa? He says it's okay. You are okay? Yeah. Can, can you repeat that, sorry? Is there any contradiction with what President Macron of France is doing in Africa, what the role they've played in Central Africa? French soldiers were accused of raping, of looting in Central Africa. Afghan uh, soldiers uh, contributed to uh, the deposition of uh, Laurent Gbagbo, who was uh, recently acquitted by the International Court of Justice beside his uh, collaborator, uh, Blegude. Are you okay? Oh, okay. Uh, uh, President, Thank you. President Keita. Thank you very much for your question. Um, with regards to the issue of anti-French sentiment, um, French has been <coughs> and will always be a friend of the Republic of Mali. We share a lot in terms of the history that we had in the past, and we're now working together with the French government. And therefore, despite there being allegations in the media of anti-French sentiment, I would like to reassure the, the, 
to assure you and other Malians that we're working closely with the French as equal partners. And as far as the achievements we have made so far are concerned, one, we have been able to restore development in the northern part of Mali. For instance, my administration has set aside 72 billion US dollars for development in that region specifically. Secondly, we have succeeded in stemming the flow of weapons from, <clears throat> from Libya and are working very hard to prevent the proliferation of weapons across the region. Thirdly, we are working to provide humanitarian support to the people of Mali that have been affected by this issue. Finally, <clears throat> my government has been at the forefront of ensuring that we reintegrate the people that had been involved in this issue. Uh, we have successfully reintegrated 500 um, former combatants and are working to continue to rehabilitate the 2,000 that remain registered for, for, for the same issue. Oh, President Macron. I had a lot of statements, just like you made. Statements from people in your country spouting nonsense. Ask those people whose interests are they protecting and who is paying them to make that statement. Ask those people who are there trying to defend their children. I know a lot of soldiers who die trying to protect the people of Nigerians, the people of Mali, the people of Mauritania, and the people of Burkina Faso. They were French soldiers. But uh, President Macron, it was as a result of the interference by uh, Mr. S President Sarkozy in Libya that caused the serious fallout. So France has a moral responsibility to deal with the issue. Well, I, as I said in Tunis in, 20, uh, in 2014, the international intervention led by uh, our former president was a mistake. A mistake in the sense that the only plan for the military uh, intervention without political strategy for the afterward of the ulcer of Gaddafi. This created a uh, power vacuum and also the influence of reforms in the Sahel. But of course, just recently, we read that the spread of reforms from Libya has reduced, just like you rightly mentioned. So it is our obligation to work with our partners in the Sahel to address these security challenges. Because what you're saying is that will, with Africa, anything goes. You just go and bomb, destroy a society, and that's it. No, I do not agree with this statement. But that's what has happened. <laughs> you know. yeah, you, you need to answer a question from... Yes, um, he talked about the United Nations... <laughs> what did he say? No, no, you, you answer his question. <laughs> You talked about the United Nations serving the interests of the, <clears throat> the P5. That is something I totally disagree with, and I'm highly disappointed and surprised why you make such a claim. The United Nations is not having any peacekeeping missions in those P5 countries you mentioned. The United Nations has operated in West Africa and the whole of the African continent in many areas where stability and security has been threatened. You will remember that UNMIS in South Sudan, that was the, the mission where the UN has the highest number, or in fact, the, the, the highest number of um, peacekeeping missions were deployed in that country. And also, that was where we invested a lot of money compared to any other peacekeeping mission in Africa. And we have created offices <coughs> in, across the continent to ensure that we work with our partners um, in ensuring stability and democratic governance in those countries. And we are proud to report that positive developments have taken place in these areas, especially with regards to elections, um, which you know was currently is working very hard to ensure that there is democratic consolidation in those countries. So the you know was is not um, serving the interests of P5 members, as you claim. In fact, the United States of America in 2018. The mandate, came from where? The mandate of? The security country. You know, was the Security Council? Yes. Who the, security the Security Council, is, yes, it's, it's led by the P5 countries. However, you have to understand that um, the Security Council. Yes, the United States, some of these P5 countries contribute the greater chunk of the budget. However, in 2018 2019, the United States decided, in fact, to cut their budget. They decided to cut their budget to $285 million, which, which we can say, yes. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Moderator. Um, 
My name is Francois Medonamset. I am a young person from the Central African Republic. Um, Monsieur Macron, thank you very much for coming here, although your presence is unwarranted. When you are voted into office, young people across the continent, especially in Francophone African countries, were joyous. They thought there was hope in you. They saw something in you that they did not see in your predecessors, but you have let us down. Do, does Africa need you, or do you need Africa? You insinuated earlier that by having a strong grip on the CFA franc, you have actually guaranteed economic stability in these parts of the continent. That is false. What is economic stability? If there remain serious physical imbalances, public debt is on the rise, poverty is deepening, what do you make of this? I want to tell you, and I speak for a majority of the young people from this part of the continent, that we do not need you. Can you tell us categorically why you have such a strong grip on our continent? These puppets who sit on the table with you, we do not trust them. They are bootlicking. They are bootlicking. All along you've been talking, and they have been quiet. I am so surprised that the president of Mali is seated there not representing the voice and the concerns okay. of the people okay. Okay. who was put Pre in office to represent. France is buttering your bread. President and Macron. Please. And he's finished. Uh, no, Mr. President Macron. Macron, let me help him. <laughs> let, 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 let me help the president. Mm. Please, the only thing you can do for us, uh, Monsieur Macron, is to answer only one question. Do you need Africa or does Africa need you? Of course you are running to Africa. Just tell us, confess here and now, and we will understand your situation. All the protests at home, your seat is hot at home. But the fact is, the place you've run to in Africa, you need Africa. You need Africa and Africans. But the president, excellency on your, the other excellency on your left hand, Greater. will not tell the truth, both, both of you lying that it is the media that is distorting the story, young Africans protesting in that way, you cannot deny it. President Keita, please face the truth about your role, that you are really dancing to the tune of France. There isn't equal partnership there. Please at least tell us the truth. You owe us that. And Dr. Chambers, I have deep respect for you the job, please, um, before you continue to nod, sir. I have not finished. I have deep respect for the role you played in ECOWAS. Mm -hmm. but, but please do not use intellectual jargons with us about how the UN, uh, you know, how there's no politics of P5. Face the reality that you got to the UN hoping to do more things, better things than what you did in ECOWAS, but you did not know that this is how the UN was. If all of you tell us the truths like that, we can at least live and have some tea or coffee. Please. Okay. Uh, pre pre President Keith, you can start off. I have heard what you have had to say. However, I am very curious about what sources of information you're using, because I, for once, uh, do not listen to Wikipedia and sources of information that are not um, competent and credible enough. Um, on the issue of whether we have mutual partnership with France. We have equal partnership with France because we have mutual defense issues and mutual interests in the security of the Sahel because we are all confronting the issue of global tourism. If the Sahel is not secure, France will not be secure, Europe will not be secure, the rest of Africa will not be secure. Therefore, the security of the Sahel has global implications on security. Yes. Why, why are you worried about Europe's security? I am worried about European security because, for instance, we are in London this morning and we have a, um, a citizen of the Republic of Mali in Europe. Therefore, if we cannot secure <laughs> our region, we will have more people leaving our continent to go to Europe. And if Europe is not secure, we might have people moving from Europe to Africa. Therefore, we have to ensure that we all work together because the issue of tourism has to do with mutual defense and mutual interests. 
for the common goal of dealing with terrorism. Therefore, I advise you to read credible sources of information so that you can be aware of the interests and the implications of security in the Sahel. Thank you. Yeah, President Macron. <laughs> well, as you mentioned, if you compare the Francophone countries using, uh, that affect our currency, they enjoy more macroeconomic stability, which enables them to control inflation compared to other countries who are not using the currency. Also, regarding our presence in the Sahel, you just mentioned that you need equal partnership <coughs> with us which we are, uh, that is how the relationship it is. Also, we deal with the sovereign leaders of these countries. Just recently, we met in power in France, and these leaders clarified their position that they need our presence. They also need more international presence in the Sahel in order to fight terrorism. So I, I don't understand why you say that you don't need our presence. This is supposed to be an internal issue. You need to channel it through your elected representatives. France as a country deals with the leaders of these countries, not the citizens directly. We are trying to work, uh, we don't need to tell you what to do in your country. We are giving you the space. So you need to channel it to your leaders. If your leaders doesn't want our present, presence in the uh, region, they need to tell us. Dr. Chambers. I am very glad that my sister admitted that she has great respect for me. Um, Regarding issues happening at the United Nations, I'm very much on top of issues. Um, you remember that the crisis going on. Um, just recently, there was a meeting that was held in Berlin where the issue uh, in, in Libya was at the, 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 at the center of discussion. And the United Nations Secretary General also attended the African Union Summit in Addis Ababa that was just recently concluded this month. And he reiterates um, his standpoint and ensuring that there is political dialogue in that country. And also, the United Nations Security Council has adopted UNSC 2510, which, was to, which is to make sure that the um, agreements that were uh, made at, at the Berlin Conference are implemented to the latter. And part of that is to make sure that we are committed to the ceasefire um, and also the arms embargo that has been put by the, by the Berlin Conference. And we are working closely with our partners, um, especially in the region of the Sahel, to make sure that there is stability in this area. So I am, I am very much aware of issues happening, just that sometimes these things can be beyond the control of my office, and I just have to engage the partners in the, in the, in the region. It is quite interesting you mentioned the, the recent Berlin conference. Uh, Africa was marginalized. Uh, are we going back to the 1884-1885 Berlin conference whereby Libya is uh, uh, divided among uh, the various parts. Because Russia is in there now, Turkey is in there, but Africa is not even in there. I think these are all concerted efforts to make sure that everyone is on board. Um, Africa being absent in this meeting is not, um, it's not deliberate. Um, I think um, the Addis Ababa meeting was a step towards making sure that African countries come together to discuss their issues. Um, I am sure that more conferences will follow suit and Africa will be invited to these forums. Yes. Uh, President Macron, you said you were doing everything to cooperate with the African countries, uh, which are your, supposedly your partners. When your predecessor, whom you mentioned just a minute ago, went to Mali in, in 2013, he said the, this was the most beautiful day of his political life, which of course made few eyebrows uh, sort of raise all things. Uh, I was wondering what you've been doing. You said that this was a uh, military intervention, but you were doing more. Apart from making a bigger military intervention in the Berkan um, operation, uh, the only thing you seem to have done in terms of uh, getting all the African partners together was to change the CFA, as my colleagues back here have said. And you've, you've changed the CFA into the ECHO, which is exactly the same thing with a different name. I mean, ask the government of Nigeria. Who did you, apart from President Ouattara, who was in London a week ago and uh, said that he and you basically created the ECHO, who else is part of it? What have you done to, uh, to do something beyond the military intervention. And uh, the, His Excellency, Her Excellency, <laughs> His Excellency, His Excellency, the President of Mali, yes. uh, you said that you have been integrating people, uh, all the victims. All 
the governments of Mali have done since 1963 was integrate uh, former combatants, uh, the rebels, into the military, and has not changed. This has not changed at all uh, the situation. So you take a few hundred soldiers, former combatants or uh, rebels, and you put them in the army, but the problems remain the same. And that's what you're doing now. Have you done anything, for instance, to solve the ethnic problems? In the beginning, it was just the Tuareg, and now it's the Fulani, the Dogon, the Bambara, all of them are part of it. You, you don't seem to have done anything. So what are your solutions, in both uh, as, as a Mali and also as in a partnership with France, as you claim that you're doing very much? Yeah, uh, President Keita. Um, that is a very good question. However, <laughs> however, I would like to um, let you know that there have been um, allegations of certain communities being excluded and marginalized in Mali. However, um, on the ground, things are very different because we have seen, for instance, the region of Kidal have four representatives representing their people. Um, we have lived, Mali is an old country, we have lived and used um, we have lived side by side since the 11th century, and therefore we know that these forces that are now coming in to divide us are just trying to use a violent ideology to fight the democracy that we have. Um, and therefore, I would like to reassure you and other people from Mali and the rest of the Sahel region that we will continue to work together with our brothers and sisters to build a united Mali. Um, on the issue of reintegrating people who have been ex-combatants, we have realized that we cannot deal with the issue of terrorism using force alone. And therefore, we have decided to take the unorthodox route of combining both soft power and hard power into trying to deal with this issue because terrorism is a global phenomenon that changes every day and we cannot use force to get rid of the people, of all the people that have been um, radicalized and misled by these voices of hateful ideology and therefore we're working to make sure that we reintegrate them into society after disengaging them, dis um, um, go making sure that they go through disarmament and when they get reintegrated into the society they will be able to appreciate and respect the diversity that we have in Mali as a country. President Macron. Well, thank you very much. Uh, our intervention in the Sahel is not only military, we are also pursuing economic programs. I'm working together with my partners in the Sahel in order for them to address the root causes of the uh, insecurity in the Sahel. As part of the uh, seven billion pounds, uh, seven billion euro we, we pledge for our economic programs, majority of it will go to Africa. So we are also working uh, to help them straighten the rules of law and also their democratic institution. This will enable them to uh, fight the insecurity that is challenging the region. But the Sahel has been insecure for a very long time. When will you finally resolve this insecurity? Well, uh, terrorism is not something that you can uh, give a day of uh, date of ending it. We are hoping it will be soon. But they're also not just terrorists in, in, in the, the drug traffickers, human traffickers, and just general criminals who you can deal with rather quickly. Well, uh, like I mentioned earlier, we are not there to tell Africans what to do. We are only there to support them. So this is uh, a partnership that will support them based on the areas uh, with strategic intelligence and uh, information in order for them to tackle the insecurity in the region. Yes. Um, President Keita, my name is Mariam uh, from the village of Niono. Um, Mali is one of the countries with the highest rate of child marriages and my own daughter ran away to go and be married because I can, I'm unable to provide her with the life she wants. The economy is basically nothing at this time. What are you doing for women like us who are losing their daughters to run off to get married because of lack of a better option? Uh, I am sorry about what happened to you. I don't daughter. need you to be sorry because uh, my daughter is already gone. I want you to give me tangible way forward. I was getting to that, but like I said, I am sorry about what happened to your daughter. 
My administration has set aside $72 billion for development. I don't see it, Mr. President. North. I don't see the $72 billion. At this time, I don't know what I'm eating for supper. You're telling me about $72 billion. My administration has set aside $72 billion for development in the northern part of the country. Um, we have also been working very hard to make sure that when we are conducting these counterterrorism operations, we do not attack schools. And therefore, we are hoping that soon we will be able to deal with these issues so that children like your daughter can go back to school. And yeah, so they can go back to school and be able to contribute to the development of the country. Well, she's got married already anyway. There's still a chance for her to go back to school if she wants to go back to school. We are, that's why we have the reintegration process to make sure that we equip people with skills that will help them to contribute to the development of Mali. Therefore, it is not too late for her to go back to school. You want to say something, Dr. Chambers? Yeah, I just want to say something on, uh, regarding terrorism. I think um, there are a lot of issues happening um, when it comes to violent extremism in the region. And one of the activities to which terror, these terrorist act, um, groups are engaged in is illegal artisan, artisanal mining, which is um, used to sustain them. Um, also, they kind of tend to provide security and protection for the communities that they operate in, and that is how they are getting local support. That is why um, in July 2019, there was a summit that was held, a high-level conference that was held in Nairobi, to make sure that uh, we strategize measures to fight terrorism. Um, we must also commend the efforts of ECOWAS, um, who was able to pledge, not something they have already, but they pledged to have one, mobilize one billion dollars in order to counter terrorism in, in the area. Also, there is the, the Lake Chad Basin Commission Regional Stabilization Strategy, which is also geared towards ensuring that terrorism is um, brought to an end. And you know us, under my leadership, is also working hard with the Mano River Union to ensure that we tackle issues of border insecurity as you know, proliferation of small arms and ammunition is becoming a security threat in, in not only the Sahel, but even West Africa as a whole. So this is something that is um, currently um, affecting the region. As a result, we are also engaging the governments to make sure that they have local support, because that is one way you can fight terrorism because that they are getting local support. You also have to commit a counter narrative to make sure that you get the local support of the people in order to drive them away. Yes. Uh, my name is Son of Nobody from Central Africa Republic, and I have a question and advice for some of the panels. First, I will start with uh, President Macron. Uh, yourself and your Western partners are all over the places talking about prosperity agendas which is uh, centered on uh, creating economic opportunities for your own people through defense, procurement, uh, research and uh, uh, development and uh, military operations. Where we still remember in 2011 when you convinced other partners of yours to intervene in Libya. We all know that no, that not, intervention... Not him personally. Yes, France, France, yes, Sarc uh, I know what I'm uh, saying. Sarkozy. <laughs> that particular intervention was the main reason for proliferation of arms in Africa, foiling conflicts, in particular in Mali, Boko Haram in Nigeria, and uh, all over the uh, places. Why are you creating conflicts in Africa? For what reason? To extract resources? then calling it another thing else. You make it seem as if you are helping. Meanwhile, you're only helping yourself to the detriment of Africans. My question to you is, when are you going to leave Africa alone? Uh, His Excellency, Mr. Keita, you is to advise. My advice to you is to please listen to your people, listen to what they are saying, and do what is right. Otherwise, you will soon lose your seat. And I want to remind you also, France will not think twice to deny you visa to France once you lose that seat, because you will not be important to them anymore. Uh, Dr. Chambers. The, Your Excellency from United Nations, you talked about United Nations deploying peacekeeping forces all, Af all over Africa. Of course, because it's mostly in Africa that these conflicts are there. 
please advise the P5 and other members of the United Nations not to create conflicts in Africa. Let them come to Africa and discuss based on the partnership you claim uh, they're establishing with Africa and develop Africa on mutual and equal terms. Thank you. Oh, President Macron, can you start, please? Well, uh, let me set the record uh, straight. France does not create conflict in Africa. France is helping with its African partners to fight terrorism and address violent conflict. Also, just like you asked, when is France leaving Africa? I think this question is very simple. When Africans don't need France, then we are leaving. Just recently in power, the leaders of the G G5 Sahel com uh, committed that they need our presence and also more international presence. So I, I don't see any, uh, the answer is very simple. As your leaders, if you don't want our presence, then we, we are going to uh, leave Africa. Because I, I don't want to, I, I can't have and I don't want to have troops in the regions if their presence is not needed. President Keita. Mali is a democratic country. I was elected for the second term because the people of Mali know, <clears throat> because the people of Mali know what I have done for them. And the international community knows the contributions that I have made so far to make sure that there is peace and security in the Republic of Mali. And therefore, I am not afraid of being denied a visa to travel to France because as a citizen of Mali, my loyalty is to Mali first and will continue to work to develop Mali even as we maintain good relations with other countries. Dr. Chambers. Well, that's a good advice. Um, but you also have to understand that um, my mandates are limited and my powers are limited as well. Um, I think this advice could go to those in higher positions, like the Sec Secretary General. I could extend this advice, and, but I cannot go beyond my mandate as, as um, special representative of the Secretary General in UNOWAS. Yeah, in, in your report to the UN, you mentioned the political developments in the region, but in the Gambia, in Liberia, in Sierra Leone, things are beginning to fall apart again. I mean, how, how, do, you, how do you view that? I'm very glad that you asked this question because all along the discussion has always been on the negative side, not um, recognizing the fact that we have positive political developments in the region. I wouldn't say that things are falling apart in the Gambia. Well, I, the president's locking up journalists and closing down radio stations. Yes, um, th those are some of the challenges of democratic transition. And I think um, it, is not, <laughs> it is not strange in the case of the Gambia um, that those governments that we think will protect rights are the very ones that can violate them. However, we also have to recognize the fact that this country is doing well in terms of its transition program. Currently, they have just concluded um, the second round of public consultation in coming up with a new constitution that will address the needs and aspirations of the Gambian people and also protect fundamental rights and freedoms that have been previously violated. Also, the country has set up a Truth and Reconciliations Commission, which is working hard to make sure that um, human rights violations that were committed, especially by security forces in the past regime, are brought to public attention and also the necessary actions are taken. In Liberia, of course, challenges are currently there where pockets of resistance and demonstrations have taken place against the president. And, but my office is closely working with ECOWAS, um, who has a very good reputation of ensuring that um, democratic governance is strengthened in their member states. We are working closely with them to ensure that these things are addressed. With regards to shutting down of radio stations, we are monitoring the developments in the Gambia, and we are trying to engage the authorities in the country to make sure that these radio stations are open, and also journalists that have been harassed um, or intimidated or arrested are being released. You'll also come to understand that some of the political prisoners that were arrested in, or politicians that were arrested in Guinea Conakry um, have recently been released through our efforts in, in, in that country. And we are also experiencing, expected to have elections in six West African countries, including Togo, just um, on the 22nd of this month. We'll have elections in this country. And we're expecting in other countries, Ghana, um, Guinea, Burkina Faso, amongst a whole lot of them. What's your message then to President, uh, former President Jame and his supporters who, who want him back. It's, either, it's going to lead to two things. Either he's arrested or you have a civil war. 
he could be arrested. Uh, my message to President Jame is to stay in his comfort zone in Equatorial Guinea and stop interfering or meddling in the internal affairs of the Gambia. Especially, we have seen now recently he's always in touch with his party members, having telephone conversations with them. And whenever he has this conversation with them, it goes out to the public, um, which sometimes creates alarm. Because we all know the type of man Yaya Jame is, um, whose sometimes messages can threaten people in that country. However, I think this also speaks of the, the progress the country has registered as far as democratic um, governance is concerned, allowing people to express their opinions, even if they differ from um, that of the government. I think this is a progress that we, that we want to acknowledge, and we are also working closely with our regional partners and international bodies to ensure that there is stability in the Gambia in post jame era. Yes. Yeah, um, President Keita, I'm sorry to say this, but you seem to be quite bogus about your $72 billion um, support to the North in Mali. But we have not seen this translated into the lives of the people, especially when you mentioned um, humanitarian response. The camps are still deplorable. So who are you really targeting? Where is your support going, if not to your friends? And also to Dr. Chambers. The UN, uh, from the outside, when we look at you, we always admire you a lot, but then we know that there's a lot of um, dis disintegration amongst you. You are competing with each other. The agencies are not coordinated. And when we talk about battles of security, peace and security, that's the responsibility of every agency. How are you ensuring that, as you know us, you're actually coordinating um, the other agencies to see that they all contribute to peace and security concerns? Okay. President Kate. Um, I understand <coughs> your sentiments, but I would like to clarify that the reason I mentioned the 72 billion dollars that we have invested in Mali, is in the northern part of Mali, is because when people elected me into office, they expected to see different, they expected to see change. And telling my constituents about this money is just part of me being transparent in terms of what I am doing for the people, because as much as we're going through a crisis, we have to take whatever small steps we can to rebuild our country. And therefore, it is going to take time, but we want to reassure our people that we are working as hard as we can and exploring different ways of dealing with these issues. Therefore, it is not to be bogus, it is to let the people know what we are doing with their hard-earned taxes. Dr. Right. Dr. Chambers. The people of Mali. Dr. Chambers. The people who appointed me. Um, thank you. Uh, we just wait, please. Yes. Thank you very much for that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't agree that um, our agencies are competing. I think we are collaborating as, um, as much as possible to ensure that our mandate is delivered. Um, we are not only collaborating as, um, um, as, agencies, um, as agencies in the region, but even our other regional partners, especially ECOWAS. We are closely monitoring the situations in those countries and also working with them hard, um, especially in Guinea-Bissau where recently there has been you know, a, a change of government, um, for, um, a democratic change of government. And tomorrow, I'm happy to announce that tomorrow, the 15th of February, um, the president-elect will be inaugurated. So we are working closely with ECOWAS in that area as well to ensure that you know, Guinea-Bissau goes through smooth transition and democratic um, progresses that have been registered since um, the coming of power to, of um, VAS has been maintained in that country. Yes. There are two quick questions from the Malian civil society. First to President Macron. Could you explain to us why the French troop prevented the Malian troop to enter Kidal and the Chadian troop also to enter Kidal after they completed the so-called reconquest from the jihadists? First question. Second question. Saudi Arabia has given 500,000 to G5 Sahel, and he requested that this money should not go to the cash, to the account of G5 Sahel, but given to Expertise France to decide what kind of equipment the G5 Sahel army should have. Why is that? To President Keita, my name is Sunjata Jara. <laughs> what do you intend to do to reform the Malian army in 
terms of security sector reform because many people think that the Malian army is a sort of Mexican army with tens of generals sitting in Bamako getting all the money from the budget. You are proud of, proud of you know, showing that you are contributing to the fight against terrorism and so. However, those soldiers, especially the generals, are spending a lot of money. The director of the security of the country has commissioned a private jet from Abidjan for his 50th anniversary with the famous artist Fali Pupa. How do you explain all this? Thank you. President Keita. Um, I would like to let you know that we're currently working hard to restructure and re um, conducting retraining of all Malian um, soldiers for it to be worthy its name and to be able to deal with the new emerging threats that the country is facing. Um, part of what we have been doing to do this um, has been, one, we have been giving the soldiers operational training for them to have more <clears throat> morale as they face this challenge, as I had previously mentioned. Secondly, we have been training them on human rights issues so that they can be able to better relate with the communities that are not aggressive towards them. And therefore, I am hopeful that we will be able to deal with this issue. As far as the issue of the general that you have mentioned is concerned, I will direct people in my office to conduct investigations in, um, in conjunction with the, uh, with the judiciary in the country, because as a democratic republic, I cannot just take what you have said but without. We will continue to investigate until we find him um, guilty beyond reasonable doubt. Um, as proof of what we have done to make sure that we hold people accountable for their crimes is we have directed the International Criminal Court to deal with the terrorists that were um, guilty of destroying the cultural sites in Tumbuktu. And therefore, that is just a gesture of what we're going to continue to do to hold people accountable for the crimes that they commit they commit because we cannot allow them to live as if they are above the rule of law. President Macron. Thank you very much. Uh, our military operation in the Sahel is an ongoing uh, operation. So for security concerns, I cannot comment on this issue in the public. However, I will assure you that the interest of the Sahel is what we are trying to protect. We are working very hard to protect children, to protect uh, the terrorists from spreading. So there is no any uh, concern. Yes. Dr. Vital Kamere here again. My question goes to the president of Mali. You recently suggested that you need to have a dialogue with the jihadists and the terrorists within your country. I don't know how the French imperialist sitting next to you thinks and the other stooge of the West on the other side <laughs> thinks of that issue. Um. As I had previously mentioned, um, the issue of tourism is a global challenge that we have to be innovative in terms of how we deal with it. We have been using hard power which has not been able to achieve as much as we would like it to achieve and therefore we are now exploring other dif um, different ways of dealing with this issue because we believe that talking to terrorists and fighting terrorists are not um, contradictory things because they're all aimed at the same goal. Um, on the issue of what the French government thinks about this is, as mutual partners, we have alerted them about what we're doing, and we're working closely to make sure that the efforts that we're making on the ground are in concerted with what we're talking about with our allies. Therefore, it is not a contradiction, because at the end of the day, we cannot keep using force if that is not giving us the results that we want. However, I would like to reassure you that this has not been decided um, on a whim. We have been thinking about the potential implications of this, and therefore, even as we talk with these people, we will continue to work hard to hold people accountable for their crimes that have been committed in the name of terrorism. So who will fund that venture? Is it that French imperialist or your government? 
we will find um, resources with amongst ourselves because we we have budgets and we have um, plans in place to ensure that that is done effectively. However, given the sensitivity of this issue, I cannot disclose all of it because as you're aware, this is something that we have decided on this week. Therefore, at the right time, this information will be made public. Do you think your citizens support your idea? Um, my citizens want to see a peaceful Mali my citizens, especially from the region of the north, want to feel um, just like every other Malian, more appreciated in terms of their contribution to the Republic of Mali. And therefore, I am sure that they are welcoming whatever approach we will take as long as it yields the results that we want, which is to secure Mali. Uh, Dr. Chambers, the, the, the largest country in West Africa, Nigeria, still has problems. First is Boko Haram, now is the herd of farmer conflict. What's going on? I mean, and, and the, uh, the Nigerian military, the, mil the soldiers up to the task of uh, dealing with these conflicts from your own experience. I'm glad that you've um, raised this issue. Um, in 2018, my office conducted a study on farmer harder conflict yes. um, in West Africa, especially Nigeria, which is highly affected. We also have to accept the fact that not all countries in West Africa are affected by this. I think it's Nigeria, moving to Chad, Niger, among others. And our study f revealed to us that one of the causes of, because our study focused on the causes of these clashes and also how to address them. And one of the causes of, um, of this has to do with um, um, natural resource governance and also land rights issues. Um, especially also compounding the challenges has to do with climate change which is beyond um, my office's control. Um, so the, one of the suggestions that we have come up from that study is that land rights issues should be addressed and also there should be more dialogue um, in the communities. We think this is one way of addressing the issue and also um, resource allocation has always been a problem um, which affects um, the relationship between um, people in the communities and we have also engage the government in those countries, especially the Nigerian government, because this is in the rights. It's really compounding the security challenges in the area. Yeah, but who should undertake this dialogue? Is it the government? Because the government doesn't seem to have support in, in all of this. I think um, the, the, the dialogue could be initiated um, through collaboration between Nigerian government and or, or governments in the region and ECOWAS, because this is one of the conflict indicators of um, ECOWAS early warning system. And there have always been reports in the past that farmer um, um, harder pastoralist tension has always been increasing, especially in Nigeria. So we hope that um, governments in the region, especially Nigeria, which is um, one of the, the biggest countries, biggest country, uh, will take this initiative to ensure that they work closely with ECOWAS um, to have this dialogue. Yes, we'll now have a closing uh, statement from uh, President Keita. Your Excellency, President Macron, Dr. Mohamed Chambers, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of a world-changing dialogue that forces me to bid farewell to friends and colleagues. I am convinced that the war on terrorism in the Sahel will be won soon so that the region is no longer the front line of instability. However, to achieve this, we must continue to work together because regional and international cooperation is needed to deal with this global challenge. As such, I, re I, re I request our multilateral partners to continue supporting our efforts in terms of both financial and technical support to the G5 forces. Regional organizations must continue to work hard alongside the governments in the region to promote regional peace, security, and development to prevent spillover effects of criminal elements across borders, as we have seen how Libya's insecurity has resulted in the worsened condition of security in the Sahel. Finally, I would like to retaliate, to repeat mm -hmm. and emphasize that my government will continue to carry out development in the northern region and the rest of the country because my administration remains open to supporting disengagement, disarmament, reintegration of former combatants, and national contribution of all Malians. Thank you. Uh, President Macron. Ladies and gentlemen, France is committed to fighting global terrorism. Mm -hmm. Our troops are in the Sahel to, uh, to protect civilians 
prevent the terrorists from spreading to, uh, to neighboring countries and to enable G5 Sahel uh, leaders to assume sovereignty in their territories. Our actions are in line with the United Nations resolutions and bilateral agreement in force. We aim to restore stability in the Sahel, which is a precondition uh, for stability and uh, which is a precondition for development in the region. Against this background, we are committed to add more troops to give fresh momentum to our existing troops in the region. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Chambers. Your Excellencies, my dear brothers and friends, Keita and Macron. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for this wonderful opportunity. During my last briefing to the United Nations Security Council on 8 January 2020, I reported on democratic progress that have been registered in the countries um, in West Africa and the Sahel region. Um, I've reported on um, elections that have been held in few countries, including Nigeria, Senegal, and Mauritania that have been generally peaceful, although with post-election pockets of resistance and violence at some point. Um, we are also hoping to have democratic elections in six West African countries, which, are, which is a good step towards ensuring that the, the gains that we have made in democratic governance are sustained. Um, with regards to insecurity, this continues to be a concern to my office and the United Nations in general as an international body. Um, millions of people have been affected in Burkina Faso, Nigeria, and also Mali. Um, Mali. There have been reports of killings um, where civilians and militaries have been the target of these attacks. Um, violent extremists have also been attacking villages and rising tension in relation to farmer harder um, conflict has also been on the increase in the past. We have also, must also acknowledge the efforts of our regional partners, especially ECOWAS that I think all um, other sub-regional bodies should emulate um, in terms of trying to ensure that they promote um, peace and security in the region and also foster democratic um, governance. Um, on this note, I would like to thank you all for the opportunity given, and I hope that we will renew our commitment um, through my office and all the regional partners to ensure peace and security in the area. Thank uh, you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, Africa was supposed to silence the guns in 2020, but you have just, have you, have, as you've just heard, it doesn't seem that it's going to happen with, with the growing conflict in the Sahel. Thank you very much. Thank you.